अभी पहले आपको ना थोड़ा सा वेलकम करेंगे वन मिनट उसके बाद आप स्टार्ट करेंगे यू टेल बी वेन एवर यू टेल आई विल आई स्टार्ट यस ओके सर वेलकम डन सर ओके मिस्टर बियाओ यू कैन प्लीज वेलकम ओके गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस वेबिनार एंड एक्सक्लूसिवली एक्सपर्ट टॉक ऑन पोलिनेशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वेलकम डॉक्टर ए एम तेजमुख प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी सोसाइटी इंडिया एक्स प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी डॉक्टर पापा साहेब अंबेडकर मराठवाड़ा यूनिवर्सिटी आई आल्सो वेलकम डॉक्टर और प्रोफेसर सुरंजीत सिंह द फॉर्मर हेड ईएनबी बायोटेक सीएसआईआर एमटेक एमटीसीसी एंड चिन पेंग आईटीए एंड द डायरेक्टर ऑफ एसएएस पॉलीक्लिनिक हिज नेम इज लिस्टेड इन टॉप two percent global scientists for three consecutive year and his publication are in high impact factor journal i welcome our speaker our today's speaker dr sunil kumar chaturvedi a former professor and head department of botany and director iqac nagaland university numan he is specialized in morphology and biology with special reference to pollination biology plant reproductive biology plant diversity and ethnobotany he has more than 100 publication in high impact journal uh, sir i welcome you on this season hello no yes 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 please start your ppt okay thank you very much professor singh and the chairman of this session uh the topic of my talk is modes of pollination and diversity of pollinators of orchids in northeast india as i was staying uh, for 24 years in nagaland and nagaland university i was working so during that period it came to my mind that uh, when orchids are very famous from northeast india why not to study the interaction of plants and uh, animals like insect and birds and like that so i have chosen this topic and uh, i put one of the student dr bhaskar buragohen from assam he worked for his phd under me and then i started my work so i will i will start without much introduction i will start my talk so this is actually i was staying over here not koima here mukokchung i was staying and this is nagaland so if you see the northeastern states of india previously they were seven and they were called seven sisters but now uh, sikkim has been added so now we are not seven we are eight so before starting my talk i would like to give you a uh, brief introduction of all these states through my slides so this is the state of assam and uh, as uh, we know uh, the assam is uh, famous for tea as well as single horn rhinos and sorry and the bihu festival here you can see young girls and boys they are enjoying bihu then the second state is uh, arunachal pradesh and here also this is uh, very uh, picture picturesque and uh, here we are having uh, the hillocks the people over here particularly girls they are having beautiful attire and this is famous for tourists then we come to manipur manipur is famous for is uh, the fort here the ladies they are having radha krishna dance and many other dance also but radha krishna dance is famous for manipur we are having lots of lotus lotus ponds and the chili is very famous from the manipur then we come to meghalaya meghalaya as uh, this is evident from the term megha means uh, badal or cloud and alia means home so meghalaya means this is home of clouds 
and here you can see lots of falls then river then the elephants they are doing the locks and many uh, small rivulets are there then we come to mizoram mizoram is beautiful state in northeast india this is uh, if you see in the picture this is on the hillocks and the uh, mizo dance that is bamboo dance the girls they dance in between bamboo and they close they open and they are girls are so shape they dance in between the bamboo the 99.9% people are christian so you can see lots of beautiful churches and so and if you see here this is cicium idolis the squash fruit and they are eating this by boiling boiled squash is very famous in whole northeast then we come to the state of nagaland and uh, here we are having 16 uh, main tribes and 29 sub tribes so this is the koniak tribe if i am correct sorry and here the wooden park is there wooden park is there here if you can see and then this is the hydroelectric uh, power uh, river this is dam rather and these fruits they are very famous and uh, they are i think coffee beans so coffee from nagaland is very rare and very famous then we come to sikkim sikkim is uh, uh, first organic state of the world here the lots of hillocks are there highest peak in northeast india is in sikkim this is a buddha park here and lots of scenic spots are there and the people over there they are uh, music lover then we come to tripura tripura is the lowest in altitude and here the people uh, cultivate rubber and if you see here this is uh, these local people making in season for rubber they are collecting rubber latex and they also grow uh pineapple which are very sweet then we come to my next slide orchids in northeast india uh represent 900 species under 165 genera which is constituting 72.8% of the total orchid species in india as many as 34 species of orchids from northeast india are listed among the threatened plants of india and uh, 93 species are endemic to this region this is reported by bsi in 2015 here i have given the list from state wise and uh, here this is genera these are the species so this is my uh, localities where my student uh, dr bhaskar and myself we have done our work in jorat district we have four localities and in golaghat which is in assam both is the, both these localities are in assam and in golaghat uh, we had two um, localities and then come to nagaland in nagaland we have visited uh, mokokchung uh, district in mokokchung uh, uh, suta phala long to valley chanki thensa and mokokchung five localities uh, were studied and in jonavoto sumisetzo zakumi and lumami three localities were Uh, selected for our study of pollination of orchids now list of investigated orchid taxa so i think 23 or 24 uh, species of orchids we have taken and we have studied uh, 
for their pollination. Now we come to modes of pollination among orchids. So we found biotic as well as abiotic. Biotic means if there is some agency, living agency involved like insects or like birds and other. And abiotic means without any agency. That means they are pollinated, self-pollinated without any agency. But in self-pollination, again, we found mechanical or uh, without any mechanical support. So here I would like to tell you uh, in biotic pollination, again, I studied deep and I found this attachment of pollinaria and their transport through different part of the uh, body of the insect. So I have categorized them uh, in pravonotribe, frontotribe, thoraxinotribe, and abdominotribe. In thoraxinotribe, the pollinaria attached on the thorax and abdominotribe, the pollinaria are attached on the uh, abdomen of the insect. Frontotribe, the pollinaria attached on the mouth parts of the insect and then they, they get inserted into the stigma of the flower. In pravonotribe, uh, they, no, fronto, sorry, Frontotribe, they are attached on the forehead of the insect, but provonotribe, they are attached on the mouth parts of the insect. So, uh, this is the biotic. Then I came here, abiotic, which is mechanical autogamy, I observed. And mechanical autogamy also of two types. One is due to proliferation of apical tissue of the column. I will show you the structure. This orchid flower is very different from that of the other angiosperm flower. So I'll show you the structure of column and the other part of the flower. So due to proliferation of column, uh, this uh, example is found in Cymbidium sinens and Anthogonium gracile. And due to 360, this is not 60, 360 degree bending of a stripe, of pollinarium. So this comes uh, in Phalaenopsis tenialis. And again, in this type, due to bending of lip of Lemley, this comes in Flickingeria calocephala. So to summarize all this, uh, we, we found the promiscuous pollination. Promiscuous pollination means more than one type of the pollinators involved in the pollination of a particular so here all the red, uh, these latter genera and species, they are promiscuous, sorry. So they are pollinated more than uh, one pollinator, then monophyllous. So 13 species uh, we found monophyllous, they are pollinated only one by one uh, species of insects. So all the uh, all these black colored genera, they are pollinated by a particular uh, insect only. And then these uh, four species I found autogamous without the agency of any insect or bird. However, here I would like to tell you the birds are never, has never been found to pollinate these uh, orchids in Northeast India during our study. I don't know about others, but uh, so far there is no record of uh, bird pollination or ornithophily in orchids of Northeast India. Now, if you see the biotic uh, pollination or allogamy, allo means, uh, allogamy means cross pollination. Allogamy or cross-pollination among orchids is always carried out through the agency of biotic agents like the bees and wasp, which is called melitophily, and uh, by flies, this is called myophily, by moths, this is called phalaenophily, and by butterflies called psychophily, and by beetles called cantherophily. So I found these five types of the visitor active visitor and pollinator 
uh, on the orchid flowers of northeast india most of the orchid have been reported as monophylous that is pollinated by only one type of pollinator however promiscuous orchids are pollinated by more than one uh, visitor or pollinator now then come to choice of fragrance the sweet odor is liked by bees pleasant like butterflies so pleasant odor i would like to tell you the uh, you might have uh, uh, smell the fragrance of lyrel uh, soap so that type of uh, fragrance is called pleasant and that is found in aridis odorata so uh, but here the pollinator are not uh, butterfly butterfly visit but they don't pollinate and uh, these uh, aridis sweet and strong by moth carrion or aminoid or urine like smell this is like by flies now here we come to the detail of the flower of orchid so this is the column i i i mentioned that column is the main unlike anther and stigma and other thing in orchid we are having only this structure called column this is structure called column at the top there is anther and just below sub apically stigma is present so this is column and nectary is here sometime they make a spur and in spur also we find the nectary but in some flower like uh, lady sleeper papiopedialum genus we found a different type of the column here now this is the column anthers are present and this is the shield and this is the stigma so this is quite different i will show you uh, through animation also all these thing how the pollination takes place in these uh, peculiar flowers of orchid now attracted among the indigenous orchid is uh, mainly uh, nectar and such flowers they are called meliferous and uh, the flowers like lady sleeper which uh, produce only odor but there is no reward so this this type of uh, flowers they are called saprophyllous because they take the service of insect but never provide any anything or any reward to the visiting insect nectar secreted in the nectary situated at the base of the column as in genus dendrobium or in spur as in aridis odorata aridis rosea and caranthi sylvatica by the odor is uh, but odor is emitted by the osmophore layer present at the lip of the uh, flower now however the flowers of papiopedialum attract syrphid flies through a urine like odor but do not offer any reward to the visitor and are called saprophyllous flower this paper i have published in the international journal of reproductive biology in 2008 <clears throat> autogamy among orchid of northeast india autogamy means self pollination symbiotic sinens and anthrogonium uh, gracile exhibit autogamy in these tracts the pollinaria become inserted into the stigma of the same flower due to the bending of apical portion of the column fringilia calocephala exhibit autogamy due to the folding of lip lobes however phalaenopsis tenialis exhibit mechanical movement of this type of pollinaria now then we come to the slide show they are beautiful so this is aridis odorata here you can see these uh, flowers sorry these flowers having these flowers are having this uh, oh, oh. uh if you can see these uh, bend hook type they are the spur and in 
is first nectar is secreted and when these uh, butterfly come to take nectar because they cannot remove the pollen area which are uh, globose and they are little bit heavy also so they are not the pollinator of this species here you can see the xylocopa the xylocopa and bumblebees they are very tough and if you see they are taking nectar from the spur by inserting their head so forehead got the pollen area attached and when they go to another flower the pollen area become inserted here this is the bumblebee bombus species here see these yellow pollen area attached on their forehead this is the close up of uh, these insect visitor see how these pollen area become attached to their forehead now this is the close up of flower showing how this pollen area become inserted into the uh, stigma of the flower which is subapical here see just after insertion of this uh, pollen area the lateral part of the flower of, of the column they proliferate and cover this so that this is not removed by any other visitor rather other visitor after insertion of pollen area they never visit to the flower so this is uh, natural and see here lots of fruiting is there but on the other hand if there is no visitor of uh, this uh, uh, orchid there is no fruiting here you can see now then we come to very good um, uh, orchid that is called arachnis this is also called a spider orchid if you see here the petals look like insect and they they mimic like a wasp here i will show you the mim mimicry among orchid here you can see the flowers and the pollinator can you identify this is the insect wasp and this is the petal here you can see this is the para polybia varia the 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 moth of wasp and see they are mimicking the petal now this is more close up showing that this mimicry is they are reverse mimicry here the the petal color is red and inside stripes or rather curves are yellow but here you see the brown deep brown uh, the inside and the spots are yellow so just reverse but they mimic the flower and the pollinate the pollinaria are attached on the forehead so this is uh, the mm, this is called the pollination through the forehead the front rotibi here also you can see this is very clear more close up you can just now make the uh, this is the insect and this is the flower this is insect this is flower now this is more close up showing the stigma anther and then the insertion of pollen area in the stigma after the visit of insect now then we come to calanthe sylvatica here also big spur is present and uh, i recall the <clears throat> paper by uh, darwin in 1873 he wrote a paper and uh, he because he could not uh find the um, pollinator of this uh, long spur orchid so he predicted that whenever the pollinator is reported that should be a long proboscis insect or butterfly or moth
so here i found a moth and butterfly pollinating because of the long spur see here this is the close up of the uh, flower these are the pollinaria and this is the stigma see here different uh, pollinator i have uh, shown here and see that long proboscis of this butterfly and see the the spur of this now here again see more close up showing the long proboscis of these butterflies different butterflies are there so my student he wanted to know i told him just confirm whether these uh, proboscis of the insect they are uh, really pollinating the insect or not uh, uh, pollinating the flower or not so he performed the experiment through these through the copper wire and inserted this in the in the spur of this flower and when he take out the uh, these these wires copper wire the pollinaria become attached and come out so he just confirmed that yes these uh, proboscis of butterfly and moths they are uh, sufficient to remove and insert the pollinaria into the stigma of these flower so if you see the lots of flowering is there in karanthi fruiting is there e here you see lots of fruiting if these uh, butterfly and moths are not here there would have not been any fruiting now then we come to the uh, silogain genus silogain here the pollinators are honey bees that is apis serena indica here you can see they come to take nectar and when they return back they got their pollinaria attached on the thorax so this is thorax xenotype now this is another species of silogain silogain fimbriata where the megapis dorsata the rock bee is the pollinator and pollinaria are attached on the thorax now then cymbidium aloefolium where the apis serena indica are the pollinator and you see here the thorax xenotribe is the mode of pollination and you see the fruiting if these honey bees are not there there would have been no fruiting then we come to the dendrobium primulanum which is also a mild scented uh, species and here the uh, solitary bees like helictus and others they are the pollinator you can see here the how these bees they come to take nectar and uh, since the amount of nectar is very less so they come they insert their body inside and try to take out the nectar from the bottom now when they go back the pollinaria become attached on the thorax and when again they visit flowers the pollinaria become inserted into the stigma and that is how the pollination takes place in prime line see here this is the close up of these uh, solitary bees with pollinaria attached on the thorax thorax you know tribe then these bees are very lazy because in northeast india the weather is not reliable so suddenly there is bright sunlight and immediately clouds come and this become dark rain and then again light is uh, there so these bees they are lazy and as soon as clouds are there they will sleep inside the flower 
and next morning when sunlight is there they flutter their wings and go away with pollinaria and pollinate the flowers now then we come dendrobium fimbriatum here also these uh, solitary bees like gladioglossum erectus they are the pollinator and thorax inotribe is the mode of pollination dendrobium devonianum the same insects they are the pollinator then this is pineapple orchid or dendrobium densiflorum here also the same insects they are the pollinator so here this is the close up this is showing how these pollinaria become attached on their thorax now during my study this this is see all almost all the species of dendrobium here i have taken six species this is moscatum uh, dendrobium moscatum this is also this is also and what i found when these insect similar insect are visiting in different species of a single genus they are the uh, the agent of hybridization of these species of a single genus that is why after 3 4 year one new species has been or sub species has been reported but actually they are not the species in my point of view they are the hybrids of these species then we come to the uh, flickingeria fugax and here the pollinators you see they are the legioglossum uh, pavonatum the the pollinaria become attached on the thorax so thorax xenotype is the mode even the mosquito or the pollinator for taking the nectar see here but they cannot remove the pollinaria and they cannot help in pollination so they are called the nectar thief here are the the fruiting of this then we come to another species of flickingeria uh, flickingeria calocephala here the pollination takes place through mechanical uh, autogamy so here you see this is the flower this is lip and these lip lamely when they just fold like this shovel like this they they push the pollinarium from the column to the sub apical stigma and that is how the self pollination auto mechanical autogamy takes place here here you can see i have dissected the the pollinated flower this is the lip lamely how they become folded and here if you see the pollinarium is there in the stigma so that is how and after uh, one more thing about this uh, genus species that they are ephemeral the flower open for 3 or 4 hours in the morning if you go around 10 you will get this type of buds which are not the buds but the pollinated flowers then we come to another terrestrial orchid like fias tenkervillei this is terrestrial orchid and here the xylocopa again are the pollinator and the pollination mode is thorax inotribe if you see here see here how they are going actually this is the lip of orchid flower and they are making a tube and they provide the opportunity of the flower to get pollinated through these insect visitors so this is the lump of pollinaria this is how the pollinaria attached on the thorax and here you see the uh, the left out of the pollinaria is type of the pollinaria now then we come to polydota articulata here as i told you two type of visitors are there one is this paper wasp and other is 
the honey bees so this is promiscuous uh, type of the pollination more than one type of the insect they come to pollinate here you see the pollinaria become attached on the forehead of the 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 uh, paper vest and here you see provono tribe on the mouth part the pollinaria become attached so this is close up of the honey bee apis serena indica so this is provono tribe and the fronto tribe both type of uh, pollination are found in this then we come to rinko stylus retusa commonly known as the fox tail orchid this is very famous in assam and during bihu the young girls they put the inflorescence whole inflorescence which is costing nearly 100 or 150 or 200 rupees depending upon the availability uh, and they put this and uh, make bihu dance so here the xylocopa two species of xylocopa xylocopa violacea and xylocopa estuens they are the pollinator here you see lots of fruiting is there because of these pollinator see this is the close up both type of the see how many pollinaria become attached on the forehead when i counted they in one lump they were more than 100 uh, pair of pollinaria this is more close up then we come to genus thunia here the pollinator is bombus lepidarius and the pollinaria become attached on, on the thorax of the insect and this is fruiting this is very common orchid on the walls in mokokchung district during rainy season you will get everywhere this uh, this uh, thunia alba and uh, lots of fruiting is there it is very difficult to uh, track out this pollinator but anyhow we myself and my student uh, we could uh, find this insect pollinator on thunia alba now then we come venda cerulea this is endemic but this is also pollinated by this uh, uh, xylocopa nesselis uh, the the uh, carpenter bee see the uh, pollinaria become attached in between the thorax and the head then we come to a very interesting genus lady sleeper uh, this is uh, so this is the column of lady sleeper of pephiopedilum so this is the stigma anther and this is sealed as i showed you uh, during my introduction these are the po uh, pollen grains these are the papillae uh, which are present inside the sincipalum and they produce aminoid smell like urine and they attract the sylphid flies to come inside and they don't allow to go them from anywhere but there is there is a slit through which they go out and during that process the uh, the, the pollination takes place so i will show you this through animated Uh, photograph this is the outer uh, uh, cuticle of the sincipalum showing that uh, because of this the insects they are not going outside because outside there is no smell so this this is the photograph of the sylphid fly and see lots of hairs are there they emit an odor of urine but they cannot go out from here they are they are very slippery so they have no other thing but they go from here they try but they cannot go out i will show you this through this like this they will go see 
and then ultimately they come into contact to the uh, anther they remove the pollen area like this the whole anther come out then sometime the grip of this anther the, there is a glue the glue grip is so uh, strong they cannot go out and get killed see here so many insects are there and this is the stigma when they come in contact with the stigma pollination takes place and they uh, they have the fruit see here this paper i have published already the international journal of uh, the journal of orchid society of india now then we come to autogamy so this is cymbidium sinensis see here this is the column and the proliferation of apical portion this is anther so due to proliferation of the apical tissues of column the poly, po, the pollen area become inserted into the stigma which is subapical like this in anthogonium also the same thing here so you see here these are pollen area and lots of profuse fruiting i found in anthogonium then we come to very interesting uh, genus so this is uh, phalaenopsis where the the stipe bending of stipe uh, bring the pollination and for making this the rostellum of the flower which is present in between the anther and the stigma play a major role see rostellum increases which bring back the pollen area and see how this is bending and ultimately this become inserted into the stigma stigma is here here see this is more close up sunil dr yeah, sunil I'm, yes i am going to finish yes sir uh, can you to... please can you please uh, take 5 minutes more yes yes within 5 okay. minute i will finish all right all right so this is the orchids different orchids and different pollinator see here then we come to uh, analysis of nectar what i found that in uh, thunia alba and in aridis odorata the the nectar is in higher percentage but you know the when we come to the pollination success this is highest in aridis odorata aridis rosea and uh, and rinko stylis and thunia because what i found it is uh, mm, the insect they come for taking nectar which is more concentrated not depending upon the quantity of the nectar they want to take more concentration concentrated nectar that is why if you see other flowers which are having nectar of course the sugar is more but they come to this and the fruiting in such type of the flower where the concentrated nectar is there they have more fruiting so this is the conclusion of my uh, talk then after the fruit are set why we are bothering about the pollination and fruit set because if fruit is not there seeds are not there so i have shown you the the fruits of these but if you see the seeds of orchids they are microscopic 
so we put them for germination in the culture and so when they germinate we take out and put them into the wild locality so that they uh, increase the population of the orchid in their natural habitat now so conclusion i have already done i i'll not go into the detail however when i was uh, uh, in chatisgarh for 3 years i was there because i was selected as professor and dean in guru ghasidas university but because of certain uh, uh, pension reason or i left that so there when i was there i found in venda tessilita birds were there these sunbirds were visiting these uh, flowers but i could not because i was uh, only for 3 years i could not uh, work out the pollination through these birds this is the only photograph of the bird pollinating the orchids otherwise there is no report of bird pollination of indian orchid so this is my student baskar buragoen from uh, he is now associate professor in mariani college and this is myself and this is my he is my reverend teacher professor d d pant from alawad university and our home i did my phd on pollination of indian plant with that i finish thank you sir so thank you dr sunil kumar it was a wonderful talk thank and you sir thank you know, we came to know so many new things from you which we did not know earlier and your ppt was so beautiful the orchids you, are <laughs> so thank beautiful you. and you presented in such a good way the orchids of northeast and sikkim and it is so colorful the northeast is so colorful yes and sir. you studied the orchids diversity in that yes. uh orchids and they are pollinators right right and uh, it was really mind blowing very good talk sir i'm i'm telling one more thing that i am the first person in india who work out this pollination uh, of orchid very nice very nice thank you sir thank you i want to ask you one question yes yes sir is there a role of microbiome or the microbes in the quality of orchids yes sir because the seeds of orchid they cannot germinate without in nature without the association of this mycorrhiza or fungus yes so for each and every orchid there is a different type of mycorrhiza actually right. before right. joining nagaland i was having an offer for visiting australia sydney uh, for for a project on the mycorrhiza of orchid species but uh, that was for only for uh, two year project and in the meantime i got the permanent job in nagaland university so i i just uh, left that job and <laughs> then joined nagaland university yes right. the mycorrhiza right. is very important for orchid and the seeds of uh, orchids they are germinated when they come in contact with mycorrhiza otherwise they don't germinate because they don't have the seeds of orchid they are very small just like pollen grains they don't have this endosperm right so when endosperm is not there they are not getting food right so when they come in contact with mycorrhiza they get at least some food yes and then get germinated i heard that uh, coconut husk yes is a very good substrate for orchids yes yes sir is it right yes right and there the in northeast india local people when they are growing in the pots and uh, other uh, substrate they use mostly they use the coconut husk very good very good yes i yes. got a plant i got a plant from amazon yes it is now flowering in yes. my house okay on uh, coconut husk 
Okay, okay, sir. Yes. I can yes. show you very, very good uh, flowering or the of these flowers. Yes. Uh, orchids. Uh, still, I'm having in Mukokchung. Uh, okay. All the pots. Actually, I was having orchidarium, two orchidarium over there. I see. And I see. they were blooming like anything. Very nice. Very nice. Still, I'm and, continuing that. Okay. Does anybody else has a question? Anybody yes. wants to ask if a question? If anybody is having any question, I will be happy to reply. Anyone in the audience? Anyone can ask question? Any question? Any question pertaining the pollination and pollinator of orchids? If there is no question. Then I think we can have the vote of thanks. And Mayo, please. Yeah. Once again, good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening. Thank you, everyone, for joining us to this insightful webinar. We express our deepest gratitude to our esteemed speaker, Dr. Sunil Kumar Singh, for sharing us your. Not saying I am Chaturvedi. Sunil Kumar Chaturvedi. <laughs> Sunil Kumar Chaturvedi. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sir. Are you are you from Manipur? Uh, sir, I'm from Nagaland. Nagaland, okay. okay. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. For sharing us your knowledge on different modes of pollination among the orchids. Okay. And thank you, sir, for highlighting the beauty of Nautilus in your slide. Mm -hmm. We also thank our Dr. Soranjit, our esteemed state president, for his active involvement in this webinar his effort in bringing together experts and initiating thought-provoking discussions have been commendable. Um, last but not the least, we would like to thank all the attendees for your presence. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vio. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you very so, much. Sir, uh, I, I hope you are happy. Very <laughs> happy. <laughs> I, it was an excellent, excellent, excellent lecture. And we have thank to clap you for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.